here we are. Hey. Jeez, the show is about to start. Hi, everybody. I started mowing crunchy cheese as soon as um, Restream told me my mic was muted. I was like, it's go time. That's right. My, your mic is muted while the video plays. <laughs> um, There's so much in this. Uh, okay, so I need to uh, pull up our, our chat room so I can see everybody. Hi, good morning, everybody. Welcome. Um, I'm, I think this is relatively well pointed. I don't know if I'm lopsided or not. I'm kind of, kind of Dutch angled, like a Batman. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. Um, Ladies and gentlemen, can I please have your attention? And I need all of you to stop what you're doing and listen. Now, live from Chicago, the Hal Sparks radio program, Mega Worldwide. I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. Hal Sparks, your comedian and multimedia personality. And I'm all out of bubblegum. Hal Sparks. All right, let's do this. Well, um... Uh, Johnny Million and I were chit-chatting before the show began, and uh, nothing really happened this week. Um, yeah. I mean, it's... Uh, crunchy cheese. Yeah, you got crunchy cheese, uh, which we were agreeing is now, uh, ironically, a product that you can buy and something we used to avoid as children. Yep. If the cheese has gone crunchy, do not eat. But now, thanks to food dehydration and creativity in the snack world, um, knock yourself out. Except on the radio. So he is... Now we've got Johnny Million, who's going to be jonesing during the entire segments, st staring at his crunchy cheese so he can eat it during the breaks. So if anybody will be keeping me on the breaks today, it will be Johnny Million because he is because he's an, he's addicted to crunchy cheese and he's going to be staring off camera. That break, huh? Terrible! It's just terrible. And um, I uh, I don't know. I I didn't do it all at once. But I had the joy of, of, of absorbing the entirety of the Mike Lindell um, cyber conference, the Cyberama, the cyber the Cyberthon the, the, <laughs> that he had this week. He's a special kind of charming. I cannot I, take my eyes off him. Let me tell you, he, um, I can't wait for uh, Bill Macy to play him in the movie. Um, <laughs> Well, if you want me to do an inventory of the darn cars, I'll do that. I'll go and do an inventory then. Um, he's he's got that kind of energy all the time. Just um, there is delivering. Yes, um, he had. Um, I I I had the joy of doing half of an interview that he did. Um, I'm doing the other half on uh, either late Sunday night or Monday on my live stream of his sort of post show wrap up of how he thought it went. Hmm. And um, he thinks it was a huge success because now people can go back to their states because he had all 50 states there and they can go back to their states and yell at their state representatives and mm. judges and their and their uh, secretaries of state. You know, something they weren't previously doing. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Thank you. So uh, the good Lord. Hal Vickery. Thank you so much. The super yeah, chat for a straight jacket. For Mike Lindell, um, uh, I don't, amazing. I don't, I don't think, um, I think we're going to have to bolo him like a like a wildebeest. You know what I mean? Just ride up on you know some sort of motorcycles and throw some sort of you know two balls on a string, just wrap around his feet and take him down and go. I'm doing an inventory. Um, so the um, so bless you. Thank you so much, Hal Vickery. Good to have you with us. Hi. Um, there the I, you know, I've been going over this. I started the whole thing off um, with obvi an obvious disdain for the people involved in it and a, a you know, and a, and a ready amount of comedy and ridicule for the entire process itself. But I also sort of approached it, and I think you probably do, all, uh, you know, currently with this idea that Mike Lindell's just kind of a sap. You know, he's not he's not a bad guy. He's just kind of, uh, you know, misguided and well-meaning. And he, you know, mm. he seems like a decent fella. He's just kind of maybe he's got holes punched in his brain by, you know, the effects of his addiction. Maybe he's got, you know, just tendencies that 
you know, towards authoritarianism that are that stem from a bad childhood. You know, this is all very generous. Yeah, I'm. Yes, this is how I I really approached him. Um, yeah. In when I would look at him for quite a while, until the lead up to this, and then the the the, the, the I guess the the thing itself, and then the aftermath. I have now come to uh, the determination that he is not a nice fellow. That he is genuinely a jerk. That he is a jerk to those around him. That one, that's the reason why none of his family have come to his rescue. That you know, we mm. all look at him and go, "Why is someone close to him not sat him down and gone? These are not ev- these pee caps you think you have are not evidence of anything." These incursions by foreign computers on the secretaries of state's computers are not hacks. They are media companies in foreign countries checking in with the unofficial updates, the uncertified updates, the ones that the secretary of state gives to Steve Kornacki. The foreign press does that, too, all over the world, especially places that have um, areas where policy towards that country might change greatly over the next, during the next administration. Countries like Germany and Spain and China and Italy and England and, you know, in, in the, the UK in general, because of COVID, because of uh, travel, because of vaccinations, because like there were a lot of reasons that had nothing to do with Trump's wall or tariffs or any of that other stuff that these countries would be concerned about who's going to win. If Trump stays in, what are we going to do? If Biden gets in, what does that mean for us? So they were checking every hour on these things and just constantly doing updates. And so there's activity between computers all over the world and these the update computers at the Secretary of State's office. Now, anybody, any idiot knows this. Because this is just that people refreshing web pages. If you go to a very popular web page, one of the ones that like nearly crashes the internet that everybody talks about, and you look at the data, which is readily available afterwards, you don't have to capture it at the moment. You can see who was checking and refreshing and checking and refreshing and checking and refreshing and checking. It's like when people get tickets to a concert. It's the mm-hmm. same kind of activity, and these PCAPs are that kind of activity. It's it's and it's. Anybody who pays any attention to just the worldwide nature of our elections knows this. Now, Mike, uh, you know, one of my favorite elements of Mike Lindell's storyline, for those of you that uh, have lives and loved ones and don't want to dive into what his argument is, but while you're walking around doing your normal life stuff, it seems to be affecting the way people are behaving on on the street because they listen to Newsmax and OAN and sometimes Fox during about three hours of the evening. Where are they getting this stuff? Like, where is this lunacy coming from? It's coming from Mike Lindell. It's coming from Flashpoint and a bunch of these other, like, pseudo-Christian outlets that push this idea that um, if it's not... if God has a plan for the country and it's a Republican plan. And if it's not the Republican plan, it's a sign that the devil is working. And that's honest to God. That is part of that's the drive behind what Mike Lindell believes. Right. That is what he thinks about this. He, you know, in in his soul, the details then don't matter. Right. He's fighting the devil. And and it never occurred to him that he, you know, that. Often, I guess the devil's greatest trick is proving that he doesn't exist is the whole idea. Um, and I would argue that, no, the devil's greatest trick would be that he proves that he, you know, he convinces you he's everywhere and therefore why not join in. Um, but it, n- needless to say, in Mike Lindell's world, he sees the devil everywhere and in everyone except himself mm-hmm. and in his own behavior. Now, some of you may have heard that he was attacked and that he had a moment where he feared for his life and a police report was filed and very many people uh, around him uh, were concerned for his safety. And now he has to get a bodyguard and move into a gated mansion. Um, the details of the, t- the attack um, are 
something that I can relate to. Apparently, because you are Morton Downing Jr. That's exactly right. Yes, that's true. And I I've often been, it. I've been bum rushed by, uh, um, uh, by Antifa. No, um, that Lindell, the, what he gave everybody the impression of when he came on stage was that he he was attacked, it he was physically wounded, and yet he was going to go on. Mm. He was going to brave brave his way through this. We well, I'll make it, you know, together, eh? So he <laughs> he ends up telling the story, which was an overzealous maggot, a fan, a trumper, wanted a uh, a picture with him, and the guy, the look in the guy's eyes looked crazy to Mike. Mm. He looked wacky this guy and yet you know mike's a good guy so he'll take a picture and then the guy when he was get, taking the picture dug his thumb knuckle into mike's ribs and it really hurt it was like an attack oh and he doubled him over and it really hurt but he didn't show anything and he didn't say anything to the person and he let it go by the way i i would like you to store this um this whole story for later when the, the right wing attacks uh, uh, women who come forward about sexual abuse, assault or, or harassment and why they didn't speak up at the time. So, you know, let's just, all right. Um, then he gets in the elevator and he nearly doubles over and he tells the, he didn't, yeah. Um, he, he goes in the, and, and his assistant or whoever's with him goes, uh, what, what's the matter? And he's like, I, just, I, I was attacked <laughs> basically. So they file a police report about this dude who clearly meant Mike no harm, was just really excited to meet Mike Lindell. And I have to tell you something, uh, Mike Pillow, if you're listening, all of your fans are nuts, okay? All of them will physically assault you because they want to touch you. Because no one else who isn't crazy wants a selfie except to mock you. And that's a terrible place to be. Now, I, having taken a lot of selfies and pictures with people over the years, have had overzealous fans who squeeze, poke, and grope. It's it's happened. We even jokingly call that's these sexy liberal. When I get a little frisky. That's that. Well, that is true. Yeah, but that's you. We're we're close. We went to high school together. All of a sudden, I'm overzealous. Sorry, we have we have to take a break um, uh, because uh, Johnny has to eat some crunchy cheese. Um, when we come back. Um, I, I want to, uh, we're, I guess we got to start the countdown for the uh, Trump's re-inauguration. So we'll do that <laughs> when we return. It's the House Parks Radio Program, Mega Worldwide on WCBD Radio, Chicago's progressive talk. Johnny is both Brian Eno and Iron Man. I think that, that works for me. All right. The re-inauguration, right. I like that. Yeah, and uh, David said, Mike beat himself up like in Liar Liar. I'm kicking my own ass. Do you mind? <laughs> um, <laughs> thank you, Michael. It's not. It's not actually my birthday. We're here for my girlfriend's birthday. I don't. We don't go to Disneyland for my birthday. We're actually. Uh, did I have a late night? Why do you ask? <laughs> um, it is her birthday after all. Um, uh. <laughs> Um, for my birthday, we're going to Washington, D.C., because we had planned on going to the inauguration for Biden. And then obviously because of COVID, everything was closed and shut down and they stopped it. So we ha we couldn't get a refund on our hotel. We could just push it. So, yeah. Um, and welcome patrons. Patreon number 706 joining. Thank you so much. Uh, Patreon.com slash Al Sparks. Uh, I think I he have keeps a kicking me off of there. Huh? We're back in 20. Huh? I keep okay. trying to join as a Patreon and you keep kicking me off. My money is yeah. no good here. Your your money is no good here. No. I mean, especially con <laughs> considering uh, you're one of the reasons we have a Patreon. So hold on. <laughs> let me see. I think. Uh, let's see. Da -da 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 Everyone's calling these Cheetos. They're not Cheetos. They're way more they expensive. <laughs> They're fancy Cheetos. Attention, attention, stop what you're doing. Because we're coming back to the Hal Sparks radio program, Mega Worldwide. Oh my God! They went a little crazy with it, and I appreciate it. 
Now let's get back with Hellsparks radio program, Mega Worldwide. Um, it, there is, I have to say, um, um, a lot of excitement in, in Trumpistan right now about uh, Trump's uh, imminent reinstatement. Um, I, I, I understand Steve Bounton, Bannon is uh, uh, picking out a new gown. Um, there's, uh, they're, they're planning a parade. Three Doors mm-hmm. Down is, is tuning as we speak. Um, the, uh, um, Lee Greenwood, um, just ordered a whole new box of lozenges and, um, and by midnight tonight, uh, I know, it, I know what you're thinking. It was supposed to be last night. Well, yeah. look, things this amazing and special take a little time. Okay. They can't, you can't rush this kind of stuff. But didn't we, um, didn't yes. we have some prep time before this? Like what, wasn't there a big run up like didn't they didn't we know that last night was like didn't we no we did not no, no no i mean you want to you don't want to you don't because you don't want to over play your hand <laughs> you, you don't want no. you don't want to you know not what they want to do no you it's don't want to show your coming. that's right you don't want to show your cards too early so they were waiting till you know till it was locked you know what i mean till all the data that mike lindell had could come up uh and and I have to say, um, while it was a joy to watch people pretend to know things about computers, um, now I, you know, I never went to DeVry, <clears throat> but being named after a computer and having to have um, uh, other work as an actor and a comedian to pay my bills at certain times in my life, I've done a decent amount of techie stuff, and I'm also, and you know, with all my computer stuff that I'm constantly working on for this show and for the stuff that I do. I'm, uh, you know, I'm pretty on top of this stuff. You know what I mean? And I have a, a pretty basic understanding. <clears throat> I know enough, let's say, um, Johnny Million, uh, if you were, say, say you bought a new two terabyte hard drive. Sure. Are you going to bring that sucker home and just let it sit there with two terabytes in one uh, or are you going to partition that sucker? I don't you know what I mean? Know. Yeah, I got to go back and forth. I know. That's a good debate. Yeah. What? Okay, let's go straight up to four. Let's go. That's inside oh. your price range these days. Um, you got four terabytes. You, do you have one giant icon on the screen? Or do you have, <laughs> uh, you know, I personally, mm-hmm. I do one two terabyte and then two one terabyte partitions on that thing. I like it. For organizational purposes. Sure. And I would have, you know, instead of folders for stuff, I'd have entire, uh, you know, disk images so that if I had to back up, say, just my video files or just my audio files, I could, you know, just take that image and copy it to another hard drive to safely back it up as opposed to trying to, you know, back up an entire four terabyte drive all the time, right? You're making you know, me want to go shopping for drives again. Yeah, I don't. Ma- I'm. I'm going to send everyone to Best Buy right after this. So they, yeah. Everybody's going to rush out and do that. By the way, they don't sponsor the show. So, um, I, you know, I know enough about let's say partitioning a drive for those very reasons. And sometimes it's for security reasons. One's a secure partition. One isn't. You know, one's got a password lock on it. The other doesn't. Like those kind of things. Pretty standard stuff. When. When you've got six people on a panel with a giant screen behind them in a hotel in Sioux Falls um, and Mike Lindell wandering in every like 15 minutes to read a, 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 what he calls a hit job, which uh, if, for, if, for anybody who doesn't speak, Mike Pillow is a uh, story that accurately depicts what's going on at his event. Um, that's a hit job, just so you know. And he would wander <laughs> up and interfere with this. But these guys would sit and talk about you know, why are they partitioning these drives? What is going on here? We, these are questions that need answering. You know, like, because look at the name of the partition for the drive. That's, look at it. Read it. It's right there. You know, so I spend a lot of my time when I wasn't bored or snickering um, being uh, kind of overwhelmed, not with the idiocy of the people there, because clearly there were a lot of dum dums running the joint but but the thing that's that that stuck out to me the most 
And this applies to sort of the vaccine stuff. And we're going to get into the, you know, the rise in cases and, and the rise in vaccinations, quite frankly, um, that is, you know, we, we have hit a point where just over 50 percent of uh, Americans are vaccinated now and over 70 percent have had their first dose. So we're within two weeks of that 70 percent number. Right. And these are, I, you know, you know, that doesn't include kids and people with autoimmune disorders and people who can't, you know, that we're, you know, right. we need. Yeah. So that's still another thing we have to deal with. But what occurred to me during this whole my pillow thing, uh, the Mike pillow thing, uh, all three days was that beyond the fact that Mike pillow does not understand what he's being told by these people. And so he is clearly the victim of an enormous grift. The, this, and the people behind it, and he's paying these people millions of dollars. They are siphoning millions of dollars out of his bank account, telling him what he wants to hear. And then when push comes to shove on the day, you know, one of them went to uh, either like to Daily Pundit or whoever and said, yeah, it's not there. Now, no one, you know, you nor I nor anybody in my chat room thinks that those guys couldn't have figured that out from having access to that data a month ago or two months ago. But Mike Pillow was paying them to dig and dig. They did. Mm -hmm. And they knew it was BS. Mike Pillow very well may not. And basically the entire event was translating that grifting talk that they used on Mike Lindell to bait him into giving them millions of dollars for this stuff. Is they're basically turning that on the the largely the Republican voter base, but any a, any open ears in the country. And the idea is that if I use a bunch of phrases like P caps and and servers and routers and you know and uh, like it, just say the word hacker every you know Thursday, basically the same level of technological speak that's in um, the net the uh, wonderful Sandra Bullock movie <laughs> that movie if it's if it's something it's at the point where somebody there uh typing on a keyboard could have just said we're in you know that moment <laughs> in every hacker movie um that by speaking using those terms to the audience that was watching you could dazzle them with bs and convince them that there was something to this and now if they were doing with Michael Lindell which is try to pull money out of their pockets. Just like, send us money. If this had been a big telethon, I mean, obviously he was selling pillows, but if they said, we need money to do this because we got to fight and blah, blah, blah. Even if he'd presented that as, uh, it, as that originally, which I'm glad he didn't think of that. And I'm sorry I said it out loud for, and I, I hope I didn't give anybody any ideas. But had they done this as a, um, a, as a telethon, essentially, like, this is the proof we have. We just need to get it to the judges, and it's going to cost money for this legal case. You need to help us pay our legal bills to do this. If they did a three-day telethon, they'd have raised millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. No question. From the people that were watching, RSBN, OAN made a, a ton of money in Super Chats running this thing. They also got a revenue share with MyPillow for showing it on their networks. The danger is, is that instead of going for that money grab... What they have effectively gone is it done is gone for the January 6th type, the person who would be, you know, driven to, to take action on January 6th. And they're telling this person, we have this evidence. They're not letting us show it to you. We have this proof. They're doing everything they can to physically stop us. This is an act of violence. Now, over the last, you know, four years, we have heard talk about how when uh, left-wing activists say language is violence, that is an excuse for them to loot and riot and, and kill people later because I'm just defending myself. If your words are violent, then I have every right to, a, to physically attack you, right? Violence okay. is violence. I'm just defending myself. And it's a scary notion. And certainly people on the, on the fringy fringe you know, may believe that, but they wanted to paint the entire Democratic Party as kind of, uh, you know, part and parcel to that. But what we saw was three days of they are physically attacking us. They are hacking our things. They poked Mike Lindell in the ribs. 
They came, they did everything they could to stop us. That's what he said about CNN. CNN never tried to stop anything. They reported on it. They laughed at it a little bit, but they didn't try. No one tried to stop it. It happened. It finished. No one interfered. But the idea that they were trying to stop it is part of the concern I have that it foments violence. We got to take a break. We'll be back right after this. It's the House Parks Radio Program, Mega Worldwide on WCPD Radio, Chicago's Progressive Talk, patreon.com slash House Parks. I know you hear Patreon from a lot of people, but it really does help us. So uh, if you're a Patreon for somebody else, you know, think about drifting our way. It's cool. All right, we'll be back. I'm a Patreon for other creators. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. And not me, you bastard. Um, I just we went over this. I know, I'm kidding. It's silly. Yeah, it will. No. I, 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 how Sandy's amazing in the net, and that movie was tense. I agree. And it was the last time uh, Dennis Miller was likable. Of course, it that? required him in the net. I forgot he was in that. He's, yeah, he's her ex, he, he's her ex shrink who apparently slept with her. And they stop being drink patient. And then uh, he is, uh, they kill him. They, t- they, they like change his medical rec. They change his medical records to make him think that he's um, uh, a, a diabetic. First, they give him penicillin, which he's allergic to. <laughs> she gets him to the hospital. He takes antihistamines. He, ta- she gets, he gets penicillin. And he takes it and doesn't even look at it because he always gets it. And he just it, uh, pops it in his mouth because he knows it's the right thing. Nobody ever goes. <laughs> right. No. But um, and then they put him in the hospital and it says he's a diabetic and they give him um, insulin, insulin and he, it kills him. Yep. I think Mac- Mike is back on the crack. You know, I always think it's maybe something like uh, that thing about like Ozzy Osbourne. who has so much like residual drug fluid in his spinal column that if that's why he walks all hunched over because if he stands up straight he gets high so he um so that's why he jumps when he's playing live he walks around and he goes eh, and he gets a, like a little like i ah, rainbows <laughs> you know like every time he's, he jerks like he does it just sends a shot of like lsd coke and what and and rat poison through his system whatever he did yeah well like we all heard about that that dude who like killed his family recently, the QAnon guy. Yeah, right. Like Michael Lindell is just like two rungs below that. Well, he's he's the guy. He's the guy keeping that ball in the air. You know what I mean? There's, you know, Michael Lindell thought he was going to be the guy spiking the ball. Twenty over seconds the fence. and we're back. Thank you. Yeah. Spiking the ball over the fence, right? Um, but he isn't. He's just the guy who pops it up for the loonies to do that. Yeah, he's microdosing. That's right, V. Gabriel. <laughs> How much Sharon does he have in his system? I know I'm only on one day a week. I get it. I'm going to have to jump on uh, GarageBand and start sawing something together. This is the house bar show. And a guitar note. And then progressive. And all. Yeah, it's going to be good. Hey, how? Did you mean something like this? This is the house bar show. And a guitar note. And then progressive. And all. Yeah, it's going to be good. So depressing. The House Parks Radio Program. Mega Worldwide. Yeah, it's going to be good. The clean guitar. The clean guitar wow. chord is just, it's That's demoralizing. Weird. It is. It is. It's demoralizing. It just breaks my heart every time. Just a little bit. Death by a thousand cuts. I can feel it. <laughs> I do so, love the Lord of Lorca. Yeah, that, I mean, that's right on the money. Um, so there were, some, there were some good moments during Mike Pillow's <laughs> gathering. Um, I'm laughing already. Yeah, there were some upsides. Uh he called uh, Dan Bongino from Fox News uh, uh, Dan Bagino. That was funny. Um, or, oh, I'm sorry, beg your pardon. He called him Dan Bagino or somebody, which I think, you know, since, since Dan Bongino has been defending him so vociferously over the last month is really a sweet move. Also puts another check in the kind of a jerk area. You know what I mean? Like if you don't, 
somebody who's coming to your defense regularly in the media, well-known human being, uh, you know, on on the network, he's been attacking nonstop. And by the way, the the other upside is that he's attacking Fox every turn. He could he said shame on Fox at I least see them on the ropes with the crazy far right. Like they they just aren't far right enough anymore. Um. Well, it, yeah, yeah. I hmm. I don't know that that's the case. I think they just bury it so well because they know they, you know, their job has never been overt. It's been relatively covert. That's why the name fair and balanced, you know what I mean? That's why they didn't call themselves, you know, real America's voice or one America news or whatever. Fox has used a phrase, you know, fair and balanced to give the illusion of being fair and balanced for a long time. And so within that fair and balanced idea, then you can sort of bear, you can put the pill in the dog food, you know, that you're feeding folks and, and they don't, they won't spit it out because if you just gave them it, you know, if you, if, if you had to experience Tucker Carlson in his purest form, um, it'd be in German, uh, but the, <laughs> <laughs> But the clothes would be better. I'm just saying. Um, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> but but you know what I mean. Like they have to soft pedal into that stuff, right? They that's been their that's been their their goal and their key is if you're trying to drift America to the right, you do, you can't do it through. Over, you can't. You got to say the quiet part, quiet, right? Well. Um, they are now, you know, they they started saying the quiet part so quiet that uh, dogs like Mike Lindell can't hear it, and so they <clears throat> they don't understand because I don't know how this happened, but I ended up sort of coming to Fox's defense as an as an organization, anyways, just on an obvious level when he was decrying the fact that they wouldn't air the ads for his you know Cyberama and. He was saying, why won't Fox, everybody else, everybody else is doing that. You know, why aren't they, you know, airing, airing my ads? You know, Fox, shame on Fox. I'm, and he pulled his ads, which he said costs Fox a million a week and him a million a week. Which I, if you're, if your ads cost what you're making in sales, it's a bad ad campaign or you need to raise your prices or find another place to advertise because it's, you know what I mean? Yeah. I put a million dollars in ad a week, I get a million dollars in revenue. Why don't you just keep your money and sit home? I don't understand. So he was arguing that, you know, what, you know, why wouldn't Fox air his ad? Well, Fox isn't airing his ad because they will get sued. They had an agreement with Dominion voting machines that if they you know, they do an apology, air it on the network, and then stop lying about Dominion, then the, Dominion won't sue them. You know, they'll, they, they had an arbitration, and they were like, look, you guys leave us alone, we'll leave you alone, but the minute you start lying about us again, we're going to sue you. Mm -hmm. Well, that includes promoting anybody who's lying on it. So like, you can't just bring on Mike Lindell and go, we didn't know he was going to talk about it. Of course you knew. And that would also include airing ads for, you know, of his event to get, like, we can't say it on the network, but you guys might want to check out Mike Lindell's thing this week. You're like, that's how is that different in terms of reach and audience for people who have cable or watch Fox on the internet to, to slip over to Frank you know, uh, or flank w uh, f w a n q dot com, which is how you get to my Twitch channel, Twitch TV slash house. Anyway, so um, that he was he was raging at Fox about this. When in fact, if Fox had aired these ads, it would have cost them easily a billion dollars. And he was like, "I pulled fifty million dollars worth of revenue from Fox because they wouldn't uh, air." my ads and um and like well l let me let me do a, a little bit of math for you mike um lose 50 million or lose 1.2 billion 
I, I'm, you're not exactly going to flip a coin. You know what I mean? So anyways, he was, and, and then he was raging at them about this. Then Newsmax and OAN, who uh, also like news, I don't know what the, the deal was with Newsmax uh, or with OAN rather, but Newsmax clearly um, came to an agreement in their lawsuit situation because they aired one of those mea culpas and stop talking about Dominion as well. Mm -hmm. And they, and boy, but they, they decided so hard. You can see smoke and dust come up. Oh yeah. And then uh, Wednesday morning, they decided the heck with it. We're going to air his thing. We're going to air all three days of it. Well, that's clearly a, viol a violation of their arbitration agreement. And they and OAN got served with billion dollar lawsuits that morning. And Mike Lindell uses this as a gotcha and says, you know, um, these folks uh, waited till just till we were starting our event to sue OAN and Newsmax. They waited till we started this just for the bad press to, to attack us because we're and like no dummy until the very second they started airing your show, your Cyberama. They were not in violation of their arbitration agreement. The second they started airing it, they became in violation of it. That's why the timing. Yeah. So then we go to this um, county clerk, uh, Miss Peters, uh, Tina Peters, I think is her name, from Mesa, Colorado, who had her office raided because somebody in her office um, in, I guess, while airing footage or showing footage of being able to get in to her office where the voting machines were kept, um, showed the passwords for the machines themselves on the screen, which is a federal offense. And she allowed that person in, and that person committed a felony showing it to someone else. Um, now, I, I, I'm hearing conflicting stories as far as the details coming out about what official position the person who showed the stuff had in her office or relation to her office in, in the person who actually showed the passwords to Gateway Pundit. But we have, finally, folks, thanks to the Mike Lindell Cyberama, an example of uh, attempted voter fraud and manipulation of voting machines by a Trump-supporting county clerk in, uh, in Colorado and her right-wing um, anti-vaxxer buddies um, who are sharing secret passwords that are kept secret to protect the integrity of our elections to really goes a, a right-wing news site. Yeah. It goes to show that they are willing to do everything that they project onto the others. Yeah. Like they are actually right. doing what they're inventing that um, the left has done. Right. And when they do it, it's okay that they're doing it. That's the amazing part. It would be one thing if they're like, if they denied it, you know, if they just kind of went, well, I'm not doing that. We didn't do that. But when they do it, they're like, we're well, checking. First. We're, we have the right to look at these machines. Never mind the fact, and I don't know how many times I have to talk about this, where it will finally sink in with people that anything the public knows, the rest of the world knows. Just period, okay? So FOIA requests and requests for internal documentation, and especially um, the request to see the software we run our elections on, should be difficult to get. They should, you should have to prove some uh, an outsized reasoning for it, and you should have to prove that you can be trusted with it. And this is the most frustrating thing of that they these folks seem to think and this is a this is a, a consistent thing amongst the maggots is that they seem to think that their fealty to Donald Trump is proof of their patriotism. Yeah. And yet the result of their alleged patriotism would be to find any and all national security secrets they could possibly find. Right and share them on the web. 
Yeah, they're, share they're them. such patriots that they're willing to commit treason. Right. Because it's not their fault that North Korea and China and Russia and Iran and, I, I don't know, Boko Haram and the Taliban and ISIS and, um, you know, South American dictators would know how our, you know, what our software was. Get a copy of it. Get a copy of the software that we run our elections on and and do what you will. Because patriots deserve to look at it in a room and share pictures of it um, on their phone as if, like, look, this is just, I'm just showing them the truth. I'm like, okay. This, the, it was incredibly frustrating to watch those moments. But the, I think the f- funnest part of it for me was there, there's a dude, and people can, if anybody's seen it or whatever, there's a guy who was one of the techs but kept saying, I'm not a computer expert, which, again, why are you there? But okay. Um, he's one of these dudes in a short sleeve, button down, checkered shirt, white baseball cap with uh, um, like uh, racer style sunglasses on the top. You know yeah. what I'm talking about? Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. On, on top. Uniform. Yeah, exactly. Uh, 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 oversized straight leg jeans, work boots, um, uh, and two, uh, none. Mm, um, okay. Although there were some there that did. Those were the ones that kept hidden. And a, um, and a clip on his belt for his phone, right? <laughs> yeah, wow. I, you know, the, you know yeah. the fellow. You know him. Damn. You've seen him. And not all of them are bad. That's not what I'm saying. But he's definitely the guy who's going to come out of the service department or or out from under your house and go, yeah, that's not a simple leak, man. That's going to – I mean, yeah, if we could patch that, that would be like 300 bucks. But I'm sorry. We're going to have to tear out the whole thing because you got a 754 underneath there. It's got uh, it's got 228 fittings on it, and that's that's the problem right there. you got to – You got a tra- 755. Yeah, you got a transitional vibration that's coming from the structure that's going to uh, eventually that's going to break down over time. You're going to have a whole big yeah, mess, and you're going to your whole bathtub is going to be full of water. I'm just telling you. Tell me more so about what you? Yeah. So I'm going to need you. Uh, I, we're, you may not want uh, to we fix can, the tub. We can fix it. I got a buddy. Okay. And all he has to do, if you just give us the keys to your house and go away for the weekend. We can get this all fixed up. Um, we will need your Wi-Fi password and the code to your safe. Um, and any uh, are there any firearms or pets in the house? <laughs> I'm going to need the Wi-Fi names of your southern accent. I thought you were going to say we'll need your wife. <laughs> we will need your wife. <laughs> well, now that you mention it, sir. <clears throat> uh, th- yeah. So th- he reeked of that. He he reeked of a guy who was selling that to to him. You know, to Mike Lindell. To basically, he's like, oh, yeah, we can find fraud. Yeah, this, all this is full of fraud. Look at this. I mean, this is fraud horrific. This whole thing, uh, you know, it's going to take us a while, though. And we're talking, I mean, this is not going to be, you want the truth. The truth is not free. You know what I'm saying? Um, mm-hmm. So we're going to need a couple of months. We're talking 30K a day, at least, to hook up the equipment and work on it. That's exactly what was happening to this idiot. This was in in part a a unfortunately a manipulation scheme to drive more Gen 6 people to try and attack secretaries of state's office and elected officials. But it was also a dog and pony show to convince Mike Lindell that he hadn't been pouring good money after bad. Which he has. We got to oh, yeah. take a break. We'll be back right after this. It's the House Mark Radio Program, Mega Worldwide on WCPT Radio, Chicago's Progressive Talk. Um, you think DeSantis has a shot next election cycle? I don't know. Dubious. <laughs> I don't want the damn true coat, Bob Carmody. <laughs> yeah, totally. Totally. You're going to, you know, you're going to be uh, upset if you don't get that because that salt's going to eat on the, I'm just trying to tell you that that's, uh, you know, um, your best, but you don't have to get it if you don't want it. <laughs> oh, my God. 
Yeah, so the uh, the the Tina Peters um, woman, and if by the way, it sounds like a porn name. Is that the real name? Yes, uh, it okay. is. Uh, let's see. Yep, Tina Peters. <laughs> now, in... <laughs> in... <laughs> Johnny Million, Johnny <laughs> Louise Million. <laughs> Tina Peters in <laughs> log jamming. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm finding an oven with the cobble. <laughs> Twenty seconds. Thanks. <laughs> I know that guy. He's a nihilist. <laughs> log Must be jamming. exhausting. <laughs> That's from uh, uh, the Big Lebowski. That's the porn in the Big Lebowski. This is Damien oh, really? Purdue of Three yeah. Radio. Saturdays at 6 p.m. You're listening to Hal Sparks radio program, Mega Worldwide. Ah, uh, I thought there was going to be like a new one every break. I was so excited. You want more, Hal? Oh, yeah. We'll give you more. Hal Sparks radio program, Mega Worldwide on Chicago's Progressive Talk, WCBT 820. Hoo-yah! And is that him punching me? Is that so. him punching me before that? Yeah. I think it's him punching me. That's how he rolls now. This is going to, these, 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 these bumpers are acts of violence. <laughs> so we were uh, talking during the break, Johnny Million, um, <laughs> about this Mesa County clerk who, um, you know, Mike Lindell was saying she had her office uh, uh, raided before they got there. Just And the timing. Well, the timing, folks, uh, has a lot to do with the fact that time – moves forward and mm. sometimes um an, an event will occur and then it will take time for say the legal system to catch up with it or deal with it um it will take time <laughs> it will take time for you know an investigation to find out the the you know what actually happened before they can get a warrant and act on more information. You know how, you know how that works. Like if you've ever seen a crime show <clears throat> and now, um, a month, uh, after a month ago, this investigation began because there was this, uh, this password showed up on, I think the gateway pundits website. And needless to say, this was a point of concern for the government of Colorado and the Secretary of State, whose office is in charge of, uh, among many things, keeping the passwords for the voting machines safe. And so as there's a, uh, you know, downstream version of who has access to what, um, it's her responsibility <clears throat> to figure out how it happened, who let it happen, and to uh, punish that person, or if in, in fact it was her own problem, to step down herself, right? That's what responsibility is. And I know Republicans have a hard time understanding this word. Um, they used to, it's, they it, used to be their jam, though. Uh, yes. Um, um, but now it's in the same category as consent. It seems to boggle their <laughs> mind. They just can't seem to consent yeah. of the, the the governing and stuff. Um, so, um in this particular instance, um, they found out that this Mesa County clerk, he was, who is a huge Trump fan um, and believes that the election was hacked, um, allowed some, some nudniks into uh, the, the room where they held these things. And they, I guess, film took pictures, hooked up computers to the stuff. I mean, you're gonna have, they're going to have to decertify all these machines. All the machines in Mesa County are going to be ha have to be taken offline. Now, same as Maricopa County, um, all the machines in Maricopa County. That's you know millions of dollars, and this is gonna. Who's gonna pay that? By the way, Hal. The taxpayers. Uh, mm. By the way, in many cases, um, red states don't worry about it. <laughs> See, uh, the the federal government uh, often will uh, shore up any limitations in that area. I mean, beyond your own, you know, because you can make an emergency. Oh, my God, we don't have enough machines. We had to decertify some because of this awfulness that happened. And um, the blue states and the federal government 
will end up footing the bill. That's how. So um, let's see. Uh, while the while an investigation in the incident has determined the breach did not result in a direct security risk, Griswold's office, uh, that's the Secretary of State of um, Colorado, did confirm the person did release the passwords for the underlying voting machine software online. Despite those determinations, Griswold has explained why the man's presence was problematic. He's not an employee. Okay, so this is, um, by the way, um, Tina P- uh, Peters in would uh, could be facing <laughs> legal consequences for the misstep as the county will now be able, unable to use the equipment for the upcoming fall election. The Dominion voting equipment was part of a breach that will now have to be replaced officially. They have gone to that. Um, and she allowed this unauthorized individual access. He, um, and they said, he's not an employee. You have to be an employee to attend these, uh, you know, these gatherings, uh, like these look o- once overs of the machines. She said, you also have to be background checked. And the county clerk's office specifically misled my office saying that he did comply with the rules. Speaking to the publication, Griswold offered an update on the incident. We know that the information was posted by an extreme conspiracy theorist last week. That's uh, Gateway Pundit. On Thursday, August 14th, County Spokeswoman Stephanie Reese also addressed the situation but did not offer specific details about the current investigation. There are still many unanswered questions, and the board is working closely with the legal counsel to determine the next steps, Reese said in an email. The board's focus continues to remain an, uh, on ensuring the integrity of the voting me- process in Mesa County. <laughs> sure. Continuing. Yeah. In an email to the publication, Mesa County District Attorney Dan Rubenstein also confirmed that an investigation is underway and could potentially lead to charges against those involved. I can uh, involved. I can confirm that we have not entered into this investigation with any person or criminal act in mind and will reserve judgment on that until the investigation is complete. I am also I also am unable to speculate on the length of time the investigation will take as we are too early in the investigation to take, make good sense of the scope of it. The latest report also garnered reactions online in a series of tweets. Julian Sanchez uh, shared his opinion of the situation, explained why it is questionable. So uh, this sure looks an awful lot like Mesa County, Colorado, officially helped conspiracy theorists steal data from Colorado's election systems in order to give them to Mike Lindell to hunt for phantom evidence of rigging. By the way, um, did happen. Um, she showed up there personally. Wow. Um, yeah. Um, uh, I'm I'm gonna guess it was an air net or a wet net or a foot n- a sneaker net. Some people will call it, which is I take a drive and I walk using my sneakers across the floor and create a network by giving you a physical hard drive. There's a lot of that going on in the Lindell thing this week, and the fact if, if this woman hadn't shown up, I would I would have believed that there was a, a you know that it was just, she was there as a spokesperson because she was being, she was an example of how people were being attacked. But in reality, she very well may have been there to deliver things to him. She showed up on cue to bring stuff with her. And so I I think part of the investigation needs to look into um, the idea that, oh, thanks. My girlfriend just brought me a coffee while we're sitting here. Thanks, babe. It was a very long line. Hooray. And, oh, thanks, babe. Um, and so I, I, I personally think if, uh, um, anybody in the, uh, Mesa County DA's office is, um, is listening, maybe, maybe go, uh, interview some of the folks in the, uh, cyber room, the people who didn't show up on camera at Mike Lindell's thing and see if somebody brought them any physical hard drives while they were there. And if that physical hard drive corresponded with the arrival of Tina Peters in, um, and her name is not Tina Peterson, but she's definitely, we're going to call her that uh, one because of Johnny Million. Um, we're almost to the, to the break. When we come back, uh, I want to take some calls. 773-763-9278 is our number. Um, and, and, um, I think, yeah, if, if Trump is reinstated during the break, we will cut to it live. I promise. Just so you know, um, I so, did yeah. tweet out uh, at Johnny Million One. I tweeted out a, a big celebration. Oh, um, great! About the reinstatement that t- taking That's place awesome. at Trump Towers. Oh, is it? Okay, we'll take. Mm-hmm. I'll take a look at that at, at Johnny Million One. Mm-hmm. Um, 
the number one. Um, and we'll all look at it. We'll be back right after this. What kind of snack did you get? A uh, perfect bar from the perfect girl. Oh, the boo. Can I see Summer? That looks, that looks good. Um, no, you cannot. Okay. Wow. She was out at Starbucks in that, huh? Uh-huh. No, he said, can I see Summer? And I was like, no. She was dressed when she went out. <laughs> But now she's in hotel mode. All right. <laughs> yeah, she's she's always in hotel mode. It's why my in my house, <laughs> why my studio, I um like the door the the door is here on my studio, and I'm not on this side of the room. I'm on this side of the room, so she can walk partially in the room and not be on camera. Mm, I gotcha. Because she might not be dressed, right? Or shoes? Yeah, right. Meanwhile, I'm in a suit of armor with, with boots on. Speaking of suit of armor, I'm going to go pee. How is that even a what? Hey, look, I'm working on my transitions here. Well, keep working. All right. <laughs> Johnny will be back in just a moment. Um, just checking to make sure there's no mirrors. Bing, bing, bing. Just to, you know. Hi, Linda. Hi, everybody. Hello. Welcome. We were the pants. What the problem? Um, Captain Cheeto says TMI. I don't think so. I think it's. Hmm. I call it JEI. Just enough information. <laughs> Bad. They've already had a 5.6 aftershock. Mm -hmm. I will never understand. Oh. I, I don't know why BLM isn't fundraising for Haiti. I don't understand it. Or sending help to. I don't know we're going to. But it just happened. But after the. Yeah. Hi, everybody. Is Hal doing the no pants like Rudy? No. Summer is. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> oh, Johnny's back. Hold on. Bring him back in. Crunchy cheese. Crunchy cheese. This is not product placement. We're not selling anything. We just eat what we but I eat. Would not and do. Mine being sponsored by Crunchy Cheese. <laughs> I love Crunchy Cheese. You whore. <laughs> when your cheese just isn't crunchy enough. How crunchy would you like your cheese to be? <laughs> <laughs> okay. My. Okay. Yeah. Don't use that. They're going to use it now. Mm -hmm. Just crunchy enough. <laughs> Our cheese is crunchy enough. <laughs> Your cheese is wet stuff. Our cheese is crunchy enough. <laughs> Ready? Okay. All right. Ready? Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, Natalie, I like moon cheese as well. It's one of those things I thought Summer would like more, but, you, yeah, but they're, they're good, but you know, like, yeah, they don't have them anymore. It's moon huh? cheese? It's Is the it same like thing. From the moon? It's it's crunchy. No, it's crunchy cheese. It's round mm -hmm. though, so it looks like, you know, because it's got holes in. It's like it's like those Parmesan crisp things. Yeah. Mm, okay. I will say I did buy um, the 
kind of the one and only candy I really like is at Disneyland. What's that one candy you like? The Just one candy. Can no, oh, you bastard. <laughs> <laughs> All right, how we'll be right back. <laughs> um, it's uh, the goofy sour cherries. <laughs> They're just just sour enough. So we, you know, it's, yeah. And Summer likes goofy, so I one time I bought them as a thing, and um, and then I was like, oh, these are actually good. All right. So there's um, at Disneyland. What are the three spinning teacups that are the fastest, babe? The white one, the pink one, and the yellow, something like that. Three of them are faster than the rest. Oh boy! I'm not back in twenty. Are you giving up inside secrets? Yeah. If you want more like those, follows. Uh huh. These are Disneyland hacks. The purple one and the orange one with diamond shapes on it are the fastest teacups. They spin the fastest, yeah. Tell Summer to quit DMing me messages with her picture. <laughs> You're listening to the Hal Sparks Radio Program In. Mega Worldwide. Most <laughs> people walk out of here before, but not when I was being so charming. Video streaming at housefarms.com. Well, I don't care for you if it's a puppet sludge you're trowling out. Hey, us face little pimp stick. True progressive talk. Might be a good time for you guys to give up. Now I can hear. Oh, wow. Okay. So that was, this is our, uh, we're at, so those of you that don't know and aren't watching on the live stream, I'm not at my normal studio. I'm in a hotel room. Um, and you can tell only the fanciest of lodging. Um, <laughs> For me, um, <laughs> it's actually quite nice. I gotta say, it's it's, it's it, we're um, not saying where because I'm not a lunatic. But um, uh, two point seven so million churros. That hotel art two point eight on their way. They are. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here. You, it's Mike Lindell. He's here to poke me. Um, uh, <laughs> two point eight million churros are sold at Disneyland every year, um, and. Uh, it it's amazing. That, it does seem low, doesn't it? Um, I will say uh, I had Bantha milk for the first time last night. Oh, yeah. How's yeah, the Star Wars we, experience? It's awesome. I want to live there. Like we walked into the back part of it and I was like, they need apartments. You need to sell apartments here. You just need to. <laughs> like, I just I need to move. To I need to like dress like a Tuscan Raider every day. And I'll, if that's what it takes... Like, yeah, you're allowed to live here if you will walk around with the hammerhead character, you know, head on, you know, two hours a day. I'm sure. done. I'm good. I would absolutely do that in shifts. Um, it's 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 really great. Um, and it does smell bad on the outside. Um, yeah. No, the ban the bantha milk was uh, it was all right. Was it, it was I guess it was exactly like you'd expect. You're like, yeah, yeah, that's it. Um, but you have to try it. Apparently, they have blue. Uh, I had the blue because that's the real stuff. Yeah. I don't know. Apparently, there's green bantha milk. That seems like it wouldn't what? be ripe yet. Yeah, that's not <laughs> Sorry. Right. No. Um, and I, I don't know if we have callers yet. However, um, do we, Chicago? Just uh, let me know when we um, – if they're even there. We don't know. They're miles away. Um, so uh, did you check during the break to see if uh, Trump is president yet? Um, I uh, – or I guess the um, the story would be that uh, Nancy Pelosi would be president uh, mm. because yeah because, because that's um, how the Constitution works that they well last love. well last night um, <laughs> last night uh, I think Biden was supposed to resign in disgrace mm. and yeah and Harris was supposed to go along with him and just go. Me too. This is stupid. I don't want to even be here anymore. I'm a. I'm living a lie. I don't want to like be they both, president like this. They both have acute attacks of imposter syndrome and keel over. And uh, <laughs> and then and then tr they go. Trump is immediately going to be president again. Absolutely. Uh, never mind the fact that the Constitution would actually put Nancy Pelosi in charge uh, during this period of change. 
and she would arrange the next election wherein we would have another election. And, <laughs> and uh, um, I guess at that point, I think the, the, the Florida and then most of the South would have cracked off and floated out to sea uh, while it burst into flames out of rage that Nancy Pelosi was in charge of everything. But this is, this should come as no surprise uh, to anybody that it uh, didn't and isn't happening. What is happening is that uh, uh, Joseph Robinette Biden is still the president of the United States and will, will be so for um, either uh, the next seven years or the rest of his life, whichever comes first. Yeah. And, 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 you know what I mean? Like, and while, while all that nonsense last week is happening about Trump really still being president, yada, yada, um, the reality of the presidency still exists, trying to get Americans vaccinated, trying to get us out of, uh, out of uh, Afghanistan, which is happening. And considering how this was going for so long, it, the fact that it's happening so fast points to the fact that as we were training people over the years, in many ways we were continuing to, and this was a concern of some of the generals, but not the loudest ones, that we were actually training the people that would eventually fight against us. And we, you know, this is a problem that has occurred not just for the United States, it's happened for other countries as well. I mean, this is, this is a, a tale as old as time, is that you, you, know, you move in and train a military until they are strong enough to take over your country, right? There's a lot of countries that have done that. You know, like they, they moved in, tried to build up a society, a military, and then they're like, yeah, we like it. Now we don't like you anymore. <laughs> and then they kick them out. Um, this is, we were never there to technically build this. Um, we were there because Al Qaeda was in Afghanistan. We were trying to diminish their ability to be successful there. We supposedly were successful in doing that. Uh, Al Qaeda is certainly not a force it was. Um, in 1999, 2000. And the rest of the issue comes from, on the one hand, do we belong there? Do we belong anywhere where, you know, we're not, we don't own the territory, where it's not our country? And um, anywhere that someone, just because a government asks us to come there, do we go, especially when it comes to military force? It'd be one thing if it's, uh, you know, the um, the aid that we could give to a country to build this. Um, hold on, I'm getting dings, which is quite lovely. Um, uh, um, for uh, hey, uh, I'll get into it later because if I even mention it, Johnny and I will veer off into his nerd land, and it will never end. Um, but uh, by the way, um, uh, Vegas, re Vegas residency. Um, so um, <clears throat> the 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 problem we have with Afghanistan. There's two primary issues. The primary one I would say is is Afghanistan actually a country? The lines that were largely drawn, you know, were drawn by the Bell maps, Gertrude Bell. Bell, the uh, British woman who um, is, uh, I don't know why more women's rights activists don't sing her praises as uh, sort of a strong and powerful woman, L literally mapped most of those territories. A lot of the Middle East was mapped using the Bell maps. They even said, in, I think, I want to say in, I forget what movie it was in, maybe it was Lawrence of Arabia or one of those where there, somebody says, one of the privates in the army says, um, we're using the bell map. Like, where's the border? Here it is. We're using the bell maps. And they go, I hope he's right. And they never correct him it, that it was a she, that Gertrude Bell was the woman who did this. She want, So many people wanted Gertrude Bell dead that when she moved back home, she, she had a huge estate, but she slept in her guest house at the front of the property so that if the people came to kill her, it would just kill her and not the rest of the family. Amazing story, 
incredible woman, whatever your you know, feelings about, you know, the, the mapping of the territory in the Middle East and the British expansion into that area. Um, it doesn't take away from the fact that she's an extraordinarily strong woman uh, in history. And, but the, but the dividing lines on those things, especially in the nomadic tribal regions, just makes no sense. The, you know, the United States came about because over time borders were set up on states as they continued to be added territorially, where they, you know, they basically they were stopping lines more than they were starting lines for the borders. What the what they did in the Middle East in large part was create starting lines. Like from here to there, we don't even know what's in it. But from here to there, this is now uh, what is the Afghanistan territory. And treating it, you know, uh, you, you have this kind of Eddie Izzard moment about, do you have a flag um, that goes on in, you know, now that someplace has a flag, they're a country. And that's not necessarily true either. And Afghanistan, like Iraq in many ways, and, and like uh, possibly, um, you, know, um, you know, the Persian Iran versus uh, the, you know, modern Muslim Iran, um, could be two separate countries. Right. I mean, you could, it, the, the Iran separation is actually much more akin to American separations, North and South. It's more, you know, personality and socially based than it is an actual, you know, uh, warring factions, you know, as much as people might think we're in, you know, we live in the, you know, a Congonese civil war. We do not. Um, but in terms of uh, Afghanistan, it's almost an area of uh, like a no man's land when it was originally designed, but it sort of trapped the folks that were in it between, um, uh, you know, Pakistan and Russia and Iran and all of those areas. It was sort of like trade routes and desert between those places. And, and then it became um, a place basically for uh, drug traders to grow poppies. Um, and pharmaceutical companies to get their opium for legit opioids. So that that's that essentially is you've got a resource and land problem, and then you also have the illusion of a country. Us trying and Russia had this problem, and Afghanistan is having this problem because look at the Afghan government. The Afghan government is having the same problem that the Russians had, and the U.S. had, and whoever else had that. Conquering Afghanistan in the traditional sense, taking your form of government, your form of society, and enforcing it on them mm -hmm. is not possible in that region, not because there is an overwhelming societal depth there, but because there's so many tribal factions and there's so much disagreement. The Taliban itself is a loosely knit idea as well. Many of the, you know, the capital regions in the rural areas that are being taken by quote unquote Taliban are just, that's just where they get their weapons. It's not necessarily that they're on, the, that they would care either way or that there's a sort of, the Taliban kind of creates in people's minds this brotherhood of Afghan men, right? That's what you picture in your head, that it's all these, these guys with just stacks of Tony Stark's weapons in the mountains someplace. Um, they're, it's all guys and that's and they're all unified in their belief systems and it just isn't and this and, and the the structure of how we deal with these kind of extraordinary uh historical shifts in an area do not take into account the fact that this is largely tribal that there are multiple tribes there multiple groups there and not all of them want to consider pakistan legit or the iranian border legit that you know the the, the contested regions in northern Pakistan are related to, to that. So the problem, this problem we're having in Afghanistan is a problem that is there and will be there until one tribe or another in Afghanistan ultimately rises to the top of them and unifies the country in some sort of Qin dynasty, you, you know, Chinese unification of the entire area. I don't see any reason strategically, environmentally or structurally or economically for that to happen because none of them are linked by anything. So getting out now versus two years from now, six months from now, 
10 years from now, it's going to look the same because the Afghan government is trying to conquer the rest of the country, that space that is Afghanistan, the same way the Russians and the, and the, and the Americans did, or however you want to look at it over time, the Romans, I don't know, you know, the, the North Africans, anybody who tried to capture it is capturing, you know, they're herding cats. That's what's, that's the reality of the tribal beliefs down there. And it's not like taking over a territory where like, okay, this is the region you want and everywhere else, you know, it, it is useless. It's all got sparse pieces of useful and useless and none of it is cohesive. So anyways, we got to take a break. I know I went way over on that last one, but my, it's my okay. point no, overall, crunchy cheese. I understand. My point overall is that there is no there there in Afghanistan. And that's why it's never been conquered. That's my feeling. I'd love to hear from callers 773-763-9278. And of course, uh, have you been vaccinated? Are you still, you still got somebody in your life that you're trying to talk into getting vaccinated? What's their story? What are they waiting for? Is it some, you know, redneck NASCAR fan who's talking about the Tuskegee Airmen? I want to know. We'll talk to you after the break. We'll be back. Is that coffee straight up or you got anything mixed in there? Nope, straight up. Black. Nice. Yep. Just venti iced coffee. Just like you like your Tina Peters. <laughs> That's right. In. In black We're coffee. Gonna joke. <laughs> <laughs> Was that line in uh, The Edge? I like my women like I like my coffee. Yeah. Dark and murky. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Five eggs. Who's got five eggs in the chat room? Where's the Motan clan? Five eggs. Uh, can't stop lying. Do we have a five eggs uh, audio drop? Did I miss it? Let me know. No, I don't want you to throw eggs at me. No. <laughs> I do not need to be pelted with eggs during the show. It might sound oh, like no. it. What? Watch yourself, crunchy cheese. You may not feel like you need it, but we <laughs> don't know that it won't help. That's the worst Rolling Stones lyric I've ever heard. <laughs> There's so many eggs in the chat now. <laughs> oh, love it. I <laughs> ate my five eggs. Five eggs. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Five eggs. There's a breakfast place near where I used to live. That I'm opening a breakfast place called Five Eggs. <laughs> Back I'll in do 20, that. we have a couple of calls. Well, oh, great. Thank you. I, I, yeah, I could do a five egg omelet. I will drink five eggs raw. I've done that. Raw. Yeah. Every time someone says raw, I just scream raw. It's just raw. a trance thing I have. Raw. <laughs> Johnny's mic is too low. Johnny is, uh, um, I don't think so. If I, okay, thanks. Thanks, CSL. Attention, attention. Stop what you're doing. Because we're coming back to the Hal Sparks radio program, Mega okay. Worldwide. Oh, my God! They went a little crazy with it, and I appreciate it. Now let's get back with Hal Sparks radio program, Mega Worldwide. <laughs> I'm, I'm so happy everybody joining us in the chat at infotainmentwars.com uh, is throwing up their five eggs and everybody at twitch.tv slash house sparks is throwing five eggs in the chat. Um, uh, Facebook, do we have, are you, can you put in, can you do that? We got five eggs. For those of you that don't know, um, that is a diamond and silk reference. Hmm. Um, apparently in Cuba, uh, you can only, you uh, are given five eggs a month and that is uh the line in the sand that diamond and silk have drawn. And mm. it has been a recurring fixation of theirs that they keep coming back to where if you just say five eggs in their, in their chat, they will lose their mind <laughs> and go off into a tangent about how many eggs they eat a month. It's, it's, it's so fun. It's so fun. Anyway. So thank you for the eggs in this chat. <laughs> Funny. Um, and we do have calls. Who do we have first? Uh, 
Chicago. An egg. Up first is Robert from Florida. Oh, right on. Robert Delta hey. variant from Florida. Hey, hey what on, Johnny? Hey, hey. Uh, you know what? I'll take you off the speakerphone and put the gear right there to the phone. Thank you. Hey, hello, everybody. It. You there? <laughs> yes, we're here. We're here. Like the first time I called, eh? Um, yeah. <laughs> basically, uh, you brought up Afghanistan, and I'm glad you did because, you know, right now, the talking points, I, I, got, I got a Facebook friend. I'm not really a friend. Anyway, like, I know this Facebook guy, and he's all right winger. He's, uh, mm-hmm. And he's saying, oh, look, look, not even a, seven months into this thing, and look, 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 look at the Afghanistan and the, the foreign policy and stuff. I'm like, dude, you got to remember what your guy tried to pass as a, as a plan. You know, it was even less. You know, uh, walkout strategy and, right. you know, and, and basically now you got even Trump saying, you know, you know, you could do his voice, but he's like, yeah. uh, I left a perfect thing on the table for everybody and this is what's going on. It's terrible. <laughs> you know what? I'd like to see that. Why, why doesn't Joe Biden have somebody on his administration that this counteractor says everything that Donald Trump says, you, you find the truth and you, and you put it out within 24 right. hours. Well, they do. So, they actually are, yeah. Robert, they actually are really good with that kind of stuff. And, and uh, you know, I don't think it was a mistake that on Infrastructure Day, uh, Biden wore a tan suit. Um, you know, they're pretty good. This is for him being like the oldest president, uh, you know, ever, really? except for the uh, except for the uh, I guess, actually, the guys on Mount Rushmore. Um, I mean, currently um, he <laughs> Uh, he's pretty good. They're pretty good at pushing back. And Jen Psaki is pretty good at pushing back at these things as well. Ultimately, though, it's not mattering because the problem the right wing has right now is that they were like clamoring to get out. Enough is enough. One of the reasons why they just the average Republican voter justified voting for Trump was and, and Chris Matthews articulated this a bunch and people didn't like it, but he was right about that particular group. And he was saying what they were feeling in a lot of ways, which was no more stupid wars. We're going to get out of these stupid wars. He kept saying that that's the, uh, right. and, it, and he would criticize Trump for not getting us out of Afghanistan. He still hadn't done it. Like he ran on this thing. What about this promises kept nonsense? And, and Chris Matthews used to you know, constantly run on this this thing like he, he ran on this. People liked it. It actually worked as a populist thing. And then he didn't do anything. And then when he did set a plan, he set it for his next term, which, by the way, he could turn off if he wanted to because he's not going to run again. Right. So all you do is push it in. You know, in my next term, I'll solve this problem. Well, then you don't have to solve it, do you? Because what are you going to do? Right. Lose reelection? You know, after you've, uh, you know, after you've made the big promise. So, he, and he never set up a thing where we would get out the sieves, the, uh, the, the, like the, the folks that helped us, that served us during the, you know, the Afghanistan war who were as translators and spotters and that kind of stuff. And those people got to go. The, the more intense this gets, the quicker we have to get those folks out. And they are. And the Biden administration is set uh, setting up multiple plans, multiple strategies. Some are being sent to Southeast Asian countries. So, you know, the, the chance of Guam is still there. But w- they're just evacuating people. And this is this is another Vietnam in a lot of ways. We're looking at a moment in history that is we're repeating history because we were we didn't remember it. Right. So they yeah, wanted I just, this. I right. Go ahead. Second. I, I just read that Canada is going to take thirty thousand uh, um, citizens yeah. of, uh, you know, of Kabul, and which is beautiful. Well, you yeah, know, there's it, a it, couple it, of it, a couple of our UN allies are going to take other people as well because they didn't just help us. And the funny thing is, is that it, right. it, the illusion that it all falls on us to do it is kind of the rude part as well. Well, you know, we didn't learn anything of twenty years in Russia. They pretty much caved in Russia from uh, from what it was. And they, you know, they, they, you know, they, they well, left that, in shame. And I now, will say, though, I, right. I will say, though, the whole idea that Afghanistan destroyed Russia and, and taught it a lesson is you have to understand, we were funneling weapons to the Yusuf Zad and the and, and the Afghan rebels all during that time. All the missiles that were striking, uh, you know, and the, and the bullets and everything that were hitting Russians were ours. They were getting from us. And so. It was a proxy war. It was, but right. the, the reason it was lost was because there was nothing to gain. There is no functioning governmental structure in Afghanistan except what is 
artificially created temporarily by one of the tribes, which currently is the, what it is manifesting as the Afghan government. And then it fades away if it has no superstructure beneath it, culturally, that carries it throughout the entire country. That's why you can't build a Western style democracy in that area, um, you know, sight unseen. Just like, we'll just be you know, like you're like you're going to pour uh, like pour schools in molds, you know, and drop them off everywhere. And like there's a building there like it's like you're playing Sim City or something like that. Yeah. It just doesn't work that way. Right. Well, I just well, hang on. Hell, didn't uh... Hell, didn't before the Russians, didn't they have a monarchy? Didn't Wasn't Kabul one of the most progressive places in the Middle East at the time? I mean, Yes, there, but not the was, rest uh, of it. Right. Agreed. That, that's what I'm saying. Right. Like Kabul in and of itself, you could argue that it's a small country. The area surrounding Kabul, you could turn that into a small country. That could be Afghanistan. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like this smaller version of it. But the southern yeah. part of Afghanistan, not at all. And that's where they got bogged down. You know what, hell, you know, I hate to jump on you, but I want to say this. Yeah. You know, to jump uh, uh, regions in the world. I mean, sure. Joe Biden had once said that maybe we should have split up Iraq into three. You know, that yeah. the Kurds have their own autonomous land. And uh-huh. should, why not go back and help the Kurds? Donald Trump left them holding nothing. You know, if the, right. if the right wing really wants a military place and they want to act with their tough guys, let's go back to eastern Syria and northern Iraq and let's go help the Kurds. We left, you know, holding nothing. Well, you know, the, North, the Kurds are the, the northern Iraq expansion of the Kurds is actually happening without us doing much around it. We're definitely we are helping them some, but they are doing that in and of on their own. We just protected them while they got a toehold, essentially. The Syrian part, that's another conversation. That's a, that's that's warring right. with a, company, a country that's back with Russia and to carve out a chunk of Syria or southern Turkey for the, you know, the people who genuinely live there. That's, I mean, again, this is a consequence of, of mapping those territories and, and nomadic cultures. And then eventually those nomadic cultures settling down. Um, you know, that's, it's the same thing that happens over time, uh, you know, with, with, with the Israeli territories and, you know, the, the tribe of Israel mo- moving about the Middle East and then finally settling on this area, uh, you know, thousands of years ago. But it's the, it's a similar um, turn as far as human, um, hi- like uh, just the history of humans on the planet. Right. So I, I mean, I, I agree on the three. I agree on Iran being three actual countries, it's, whether it's for us to divide it up or not. Or whether it's three regions. I mean, China. I mean, I have to be honest. Correct. Having spent time in China, China's not a China's not one country either. It's the, and and part of its problems are, you know, on a governmental and economic level, are the illusion that China is a country. It isn't. It's five countries stitched together under the fear of totalitarian, uh, you know, a big totalitarian foot stepping on you. But each one of those, each one of the provinces. Could run autonomously. Couldn't you argue that's the case here? I mean, look, we got the western part of California and, and, and you know progressive <laughs> left and the left and right. No, and then no, you know, it's, it's, in, not, it's uh, not on not on that same scale because everybody still wants the same rule of law. They still want you know twelve person juries. They still want you know like like there's that part of it is uh, our our superstructure of governing is something we all agree on. We just don't. Our fight is over who should be in charge of it and sort of the outside edges of it. Um, and that, that we've got some people yeah. trying to subvert voting to do it. And we've got some people trying to, you know, uh, expand voting to, pr- to, to protect it. That's totally different than the, than the massive graft going on province to province in China or what's going on in the, in the three, what are effectively, you know, illusory autonomous zones in Iraq. Or in Af- or or the idea that Afghanistan is a country at all. Like I said, I, I think you're absolutely right about Kabul. Ka- Kabul's like this island, this eye in a storm of nothing, um, as far as yeah. a functioning government. Because nobody in Kabul was going to for for millennia was going to go anywhere. They they were they built something. Right? Everybody else around it though were were uh, you know uh, nomadic tribes largely for hundreds and thousands of years. Um, not hundreds right, of thousands all- of years, but hundreds and so, so like, well, let's go back uh, 5,000 uh, BC. But you know what I'm talking about? Um, we, have, we went way over the break, by the way, Robert, because we love you. So I got to take a break. And absolutely. Cheers. We'll take a quick break and then we'll come back right after this. It's the House Sports Radio program, Mega Worldwide. Little history moment there.
Yeah. Oh. Oof. When, I, I'm a little sunburned and uh, did some uh, swimming, which was fun. Ooh. And the uh, and then even went out into the ocean, although it was cold. I'm bad. Ooh. Yeah, absolutely. Like, it's nice to know that if you're ever trapped in a submarine and you got wet in that kind of water, you could just go and just <laughs> knock the glass out. Whew. Um, <laughs> so, um, but like, it was the, my first time, like, really doing some swimming in a long time. It's nice. Sure. Yeah, it's been a long time for me, too. Yeah. it's And every time I swim, I'm like, it's too long. And then the next, and then it's too long between it. And the next time I go to swim, I'm like, water scary, cold, I'm tired, it's cold, be uncomfortable. And then you're in it, and you're like, I'm right, an right. otter. Water scary, cold, I'm, I'm uncomfortable. I'm, I'm with you. <laughs> yeah, that's that's that. I mean, it's because if you put if you put enough time between it, you and anything, it's always like this gets weirder. You know. Yeah. Yes, the Southern California Ocean is cold. Yes, it was. Uh, between 55 and 60 degrees, yep. which, you know, yeah. <laughs> As well, there was a, yeah, I have a show tonight at uh, the rec room in um, Huntington Beach, so I'm going to try to not go into my observations about stuff so it'll be fresh. Hal's Correct China has just announced that it is overhauling its English language education industry to exclude international teachers. Back in 20 years. It's trying to solidify the mirage. There's one China little by little. Yeah, it's BS. And the more and the harder they try, it's like squeezing sand. It The more it... More systems will just slip through your fingers. I don't want to get too uh, Princess Leia about it, but it's true. I know I'm only on one day a week. I get it. I'm going to have to jump on uh, GarageBand and start sawing something together. This is the house bar show. And then a guitar note. And then progressive. And all. Yeah, it's going to be good. Hey, Hal, did you mean something like this? This is the house bar show. And a guitar note. And then progressive. And all. Yeah, it's going to be good. The Hal Sparks Radio Program Mega Worldwide. Yeah, it's going to be good. It is. I agree. Um, let's uh, grab another caller uh, real quick. Um, who do we uh, have? Next, Her- Earl from Hyde Park. Excellent. Earl from Hyde Park. Hey, buddy. How you doing? Good program I'm, again today. I'm I good. Thank you. Go ahead. And I appreciate what you're trying to do as far as explaining stuff. Uh, my two points I wanted to quickly uh, touch on was the uh, Tuskegee experiment. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is just a uh, uh, an, an excuse for a general uh, distrust for the American government and the distrust of the uh, the system that we are oppressed under. You know, see what I'm saying? When we talk mm-hmm. about oppression by the government, and we look at what the Republicans are doing with disenfranchising us from our voting privileges in, in the South and other parts of the uh, country. And mm-hmm. when I was uh, mentioned uh, Afghanistan, uh, the West is going to try to find some way to get to that lithium uh, for lithium batteries, unless we decide to go with the nickel-plated batteries. Uh, yeah, or the or the, the new... West, there's a, there's a steel solid state one as well, and uh, I know... Um, a lot of places are moving away from lithium. Um, there's in the next three years, or they're expected to go online these solid state um, steel batteries, um, which would uh, and aluminum batteries, which would be a complete game changer. We wouldn't require rare earth ma- minerals at all for them, which will also be a, a a monetary shock to China and to Afghanistan and parts of Africa that have been mining these rare earth minerals. The less we use them because of the damage they do to the earth, which is something we should do, the you know the less resources they have to sell in those regards, um, which will will you know is yeah. going to turn on a dime. Um, it's a, you're absolutely right, um, and and they we won't have any problem if we wanted to get lithium from the Taliban. Well, we can get it. The companies will come in and get it. Like like international companies will come and get. It. And I don't mean we us like America. I mean, Chinese companies, 
I mean, Brazilian companies, I mean, uh, like Eastern European companies, honestly. So there's, it's going to be got if they need it. The difference is, is that we're moving right. away from that tech so fast that it, that may be the, uh, the turnaround on it, but go ahead. Sorry. Good buddy. Thank you for taking my call. Oh yeah, absolutely. I want to say also to the, you know, the Tuskegee, um, point is that, um, one of the things that I think the most damaging things you can do is use the truth to sell a lie. Mm -hmm. And um, this idea that somehow the Tuskegee air, you know, uh, experiments should, and, and by the way, I just saw a report where um, children of the Tuskegee airmen are trying to like tell people to get vaccinated. But in reality, this is kind of like how, yeah. like, in my estimation, CRT and the teaching of CRT is actually foments white supremacy in a way that the KKK could never even hope to, because it basically makes this case. Exactly. If you if you read the language that black people are somehow incapable of reason, it's and and it and it's very close to asking for separate water fountains again. It's really weird. Once you get into the actual thought form behind it, it makes no sense. It it and if I was. If I was Tucker Carlson in a dream state, it's exactly what I would want taught. I would want that taught because I would want this kind of start with separate but equal, start with separate but unequal, keep them out of the sciences and the maths and the STEMs and the, all the industries of the future because it's not your natural way. Like it's crazy how far that stuff goes. The same thing is true of the Tuskegee uh, Airmen uh, story, which is horrifying, but so is thalidomide, for example. And white middle-class women who took thalidomide and ended up having their babies ended up having birth defects are not not getting vaccines because that happened to them you know and that was closer in experience than you would than what happened to the tuskegee airmen because what happened to the tuskegee airmen was they were given a disease and it was it left untreated on purpose the the uh thalidomide yeah, w was yeah, what yeah now, we're making the same mistake that I often do. I'm confusing the airmen with the experiment. So right. You keep saying airmen, but you get Tuskegee. Yeah, beg your pardon. Yes, the experiment. Beg your pardon. Yeah, yeah, thank you for checking me. That's right. Beg your pardon. So the, the Tuskegee experiment was giving the uh, those men uh, syphilis and leaving it untreated. Um, thalidomide was creating a, a, a cure for a disease that women in some ways didn't know they had. It was to treat morning sickness and it created birth defects. And women took this for something that they thought would help them and help their, their pregnancy go better. And it actually um, harmed their baby permanently. Um, that is much closer to the alleged fears around mRNA vaccines and their untested status, right? That is, if you were to pair these stories as far as what you're going to be paranoid or afraid of, the thalidomide is a much closer uh, tale to, you know, of, of worry and concern based on what science has tried before and the mistakes it has made than is um, the Tuskegee experiments. So, right. and yet you do not have across the country um, a cascade of suburban women who were the women who took this, largely white, who ended up with children with birth defects um, and, and the women that knew them and the women that knew of them and the women who didn't take, say, birth control for years because they didn't trust the hormonal effects that, it, you know, that came from it because of their worries about thalidomide. You don't see a big cascade of those women t not taking the vaccine. You just don't. You, those are the, they're actually the primary fronts on this. They're the ones pushing to make sure that it, it – uh, while it's checked for safety and efficacy is available for kids going to school again and the like, or want their kids to wear masks and the like. So this idea though, that if you were Tucker Carlson in, you know, in his ephemeral state, in his, uh, you know, in, in his purest form, in his, the, if you were colloidal Tucker Carlson, what you would want is stories about the, the Tuskegee experiments on the air all the time to keep black people who are, uh, statistically more apt to be harmed by COVID largely because of uh, lack of access to healthcare and, and bad health pre prior more com comorbidities and the like, but you would want them to not get vaccinated. You would want to scare yeah, them away from it. 
Say again, yeah, sorry. Don't forget that environmental conditions too, because you know they often we live of near. Uh, yep, industrial you know, areas. Uh, you know, um, and, uh, yeah. Lead paint, yeah, bad pipes, uh, right. yeah, it, toxic uh, building yeah, materials. Yeah, the There's tons of stuff. Yeah, absolutely. And all, of, but what I'm saying is, all of that stacks up. We're all aware of that. Um, and yet, if if you if you wanted to harm the black community, and that was your goal, what you would constantly you couldn't just tell them like, um, you know, I hope you get COVID. You would you would have to go. Well, you know that, uh, that I don't know that vaccine. Uh, they say it works, but I don't know. And you would constantly reiterate and reiterate. I mean, do you trust the government? You like how the government treats you? I don't know if I, I mean, you're going to take a pill. You're going to. I mean, they're going to inject you with something. Do you really know what's in there? That's how you would do it. That's how you manipulate a, a, a populace, a group of people. Right. If you, if you want to, sh- and you're not going to get all of them because they're not all fools. No, no group of you know, no gr- general group of fool of people are fools. Um, but you're going to shave off a few of them that way. And if and and considering the goal, that would be a win for those kind of people, the colloidal Tucker Carlson's of the world. And that's my concern. Is that that while while the Tuskegee oh. experiment, uh, I almost did it again. The Tuskegee experiment was um, <laughs> horrible and and wrong and needs to be a lesson of history. It can't inform all things or things that will save people. I mean, at this point, they go if a if a U.S. Coast Guard person threw you a life preserver while you were drowning, you go. I mean, are you going to trust something from the government? That's really where. <laughs> this argument is and what it's going to result in is more black and brown people dying and the worst people get what they want when that happens. Um, that's my concern. That's yeah, no, I, agree with you. I agree with you. Yeah. And, uh, but I wish the world was just that simple where we could see right. the, the contrast is like he's you know, with the, uh, life uh, was too easy to understand. When you start right. talking about, Vaccinations and other things, it gets more complicated and it gets lost in the weeds. That's right. So that's right. I'm gonna appreciate hang up, it. But thank you. Uh, thank yeah, you. Good buddy. No, I appreciate it. Thanks for calling in. Uh, we got to take a break, anyways. We went over again because I'm bumping the whole show this day. I'm, we're having great yeah, conversations no, today. And and Johnny's out of cheese. You got a whole break to go find some. Um, we'll there, be back right after this. There's a whole other this. bag in the pantry. I, I can't do it, though. That'd be bad. There's a whole other bag in the... Sorry. Uh, we'll be back right after this. Twitch.tv slash Hal Sparks. Subscribe using Amazon Prime. It doesn't cost you a dime. We'll be back. They have stoked the fear message perfectly. Yes. Yeah, that's... I mean... Uh, Pacific campaign during war to learn. Yeah. Uh, God says they sent you a life preserver and a helicopter. Exactly. Two boats and a helicopter. Five eggs and, and crunchy cheese. Mm, mm. Mm, mm, mm. All right. We're almost at the show, babe. Got 10 more minutes and then we're out the door. It's time for the huh? dance. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Um, it's time for the what? The happy dance. Yes. Happy dance. I'll go find Tina Peter. <laughs> Damn your killer. Yes. Mm-hmm. Peter? You hardly know her. Dominion judge destroyed Trump's attorneys like a raptor dismantling its prey legally. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. let's be honest. The prey was Wayne Knight. It wasn't the dude with the big legs and the shotgun. <laughs> with a clever girl. Like, you know, it was like, clever hey, girl. stupid. Get sick, stupid. <laughs> Somebody's telling you you have to brush your hair, Al. Me? Yeah, I do. You, you have well, to. Well, I would. I do have to brush my hair. I did brush my hair, actually. 
it's just very humid here. I am happy, you are happy. Let us be happy together. Whether the weather is cloudy or sunny, I will always be a funny honey bunny. I am lucky, you are lucky. <laughs> Let us get lucky together. Whether the weather is cloudy or breezy, I'll be there to say, hey, come on, let's take it easy. Because isn't it nice to have the friends that you do? And isn't it nice that the sky is so blue? And isn't it nice to say I love you? Chugga, chugga, choo, choo, woo, woo. I am smiling, you are smiling. Let us smile together. Whether the weather is cloudy or stormy, I will still be there in the morning. I'll be right by your side in the morning. I'll make you breakfast in the morning. I hope that you like cereal. Yeah. I... <laughs> yeah. Hey, welcome cereal. back to the House it is good. program, uh, Mega Worldwide. Mm -hmm. Now time for the happy ending. Yay! Yay! You gotta play the um, song again. Yeah, we went through the whole thing. Uh, it's good. Um... <laughs> Welcome back to the show. So uh, tonight I have a show in Huntington Beach at the Rec Room. Um, one of the one of the you know one of these uh, stagger stop live shows that I you know that we booked when things were kind of and maybe no and then back to the thing and the you know um, same thing on the twenty third I'm doing a Zoom show for Flappers Flappers uh, Comedy dot com which is a you know shows that I do for them to keep them afloat during yeah. the current unpleasantness. And uh, I will also do, be, be doing a live show from there on that Wednesday. So Zoom show Monday, live show Wednesday, the 23rd and the 25th um, of this month uh, at Flappers. But tonight I will be at the rec room. And uh, this afternoon I will be at uh, Disney California Adventure for about six hours. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> um, for my girlfriend's birthday because we're hanging out. Um, so, I, you know, there's, there's actually a lot of good stuff happening. I know, uh, you know, we are surrounded by, um, horrific nonsense. Um, it seems all the time, but the reality is, is that while the, the spike in new Delta variant cases is, uh, troubling and horrifying and certainly Mississippi and, um, Florida are having the worst of it. Alabama's also bad. Georgia's, uh, also in trouble. Uh, it is largely among the, un it is, wholly and completely among the unvaccinated. And that is the one thing that has finally made people recognize that it is time to get, a va you know, to get vaccinated. Um, I have the uh, Pfizer uh, vaccination. I I got it as early as I possibly could back in March. And uh, check with your doctor, but I, you know, I had no side symptoms, no nothing. I, you know, I, I had a soreness in the arm and then I was off and about things just like any other vaccine I've I had ever had. And I got it in April and May and it, mm -hmm. it kicked my ass a little after the second one, but it was just yeah. three day. Right. Yeah. So the Pfizer, um, um, <laughs> uh, so I, I have to say like, there's the, you know, the threat of COVID expansion and the Delta variant and, you know, possibly a Lambda variant and a, you know, and I, I, by the way, I still stand by the fact that it should be the Donald variant, variant follow, you know, and the uh, Eric variant, you know. And, yeah, some, you know, if somebody on CNN suggested that they, the, all the variants be named after Republican governors. Yeah, absolutely. The, like this would be the DeSantis variant. And in yep. many ways, it would be wholly appropriate to call it that right now. Um, um uh, Marco Rubio um, tweeted a, let's see, I want to read this exactly. I bet, I bet um, he's got this nailed down. Yeah. Um, so he's in a state that he is the, he represents in the Senate and he's buddies with the governor and they have told the federal government to stop bothering them, except uh, while you're on your way out, could you please leave us some ventilators um, and please send us some PPE and, uh, and, and by the way, the Biden administration has without hesitation. There's been no moment where Joe Biden has talked to Kamala Harris and like, all right, you can talk to him, but I'm not returning his phone calls. And they can wait. When when they need oh, the no. PPE by this afternoon, send it out tomorrow morning like that. None of that is happening. None of it. As soon as and oftentimes, which is a beautiful thing, the. Biden and his team are waiting with the emergency declaration paperwork on their end for the state to ask for it. 
so that it's already filled out and ready to go. And he just signs it as soon as they ask. So there's no delay because people's lives are on the line. Even if they didn't vote for you, they're human beings. And you certainly aren't going to win their vote or their family's vote or the vote after that next time. Unless I guess you're a Republican, in which case they they, they will follow Trump to the grave. Um, but Marco Rubio tweeted, keep me safe, oh God, in you I take refuge. Y- yeah. You know why? Because the hospitals are full. <laughs> you must take refuge in the Lord <laughs> because... Uh, if you're, if, it didn't especially help if you're in, in the mis- 1890s, no, no, it really didn't. And the, and, uh, a lot. yeah, um, it, it is amazing to me that these guys operate as if the rest of us can't see what's going on. You know what I mean? They, he's they vaccinated they, though, right? Oh, of course he is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he's, I mean, and in many ways, it's a it, it it's even more rude because he's been vaccinated that it ends up being like a slam on people who aren't in his state. No, uh, no, no, no. I'm a Republican. I hate Trump. Well, at, you would be the outside group of this WW. It's a, it's a whole different uh, crowd that we're talking about. And unfortunately, they're the ones filling up the hospitals. They're the ones who are. You know, in, in Georgia, there was a story today that if if your child needs a hospital bed in the pediatric wing, they will have to wait for a child to die to get one. That's Republicanism. That's what Republican governance gives you. That's and what they want. The science behind the vaccine, but rushing to a hospital right. for treatment, which has which been practices the exact same science. Right. Yeah. Like, I don't trust uh, I don't trust the government. So I'm going to go to a doctor who is certified by the government and given every every single item in that place is is subject to government regulations so that it's it, it, the standard of quality is there to make sure that it, you are not harmed while you are getting fixed, while you are being healed. Um, it, yes, Arkansas is uh, Arkansas is uh, curious because. They don't. They were not reporting their numbers, so everybody was looking at the the map and going, "Oh my God, there's spikes everywhere," except Arkansas. And you're like, uh, "Yeah, that not quite." But the the upside is, and I, I really do believe that this is an upside, is that the Biden administration, in spite of all the crap rhetoric, and I don't want to hear a blip from you from Ron DeSantis, and uh, all the all just straight up. Rep- hatred from the Republicans for for average stuff that they actually, you know, agree on policy wise most of the time, you know, vilifying Biden and Harris as these like evil commies and baby eaters and blah, 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 and all this nonsense. And then in the end, asking for help and getting it. That, I think, is the good news of all this. And that, and that Biden is, as a, as a president, as the leader, as the commander in chief of the military and as president of the United States, is taking the difficult and painful and nearly impossible task of removing us from Afghanistan that has stymied pre, you know, every president since Bush started it mm-hmm. and just doing it. That in and of itself is an extraordinary thing. I don't, I, I, I feel like it's in the mess of what it looks like. People are getting lost in the, this is the guy that's putting an end to this ongoing mess. And so I, I you know, that, that upside is, I think, worth noting for everybody. It's a, it's a totally different different world than it was a year ago under Donald Trump. It just simply is. And, and I, I'm, I have a certain amount of pride in that for all the extra crap that's happening, you know, all the Mike Lindell stuff, which will drag around and whatever, but the both infrastructure bills passed the, uh, the Senate first rung and are in the house to get voted on 
And there's this tug and pull between progressives and others who they think if they can't get the 3.5 because the filibuster won't go away, we don't want to lose the 1.2 to that. You don't want to leave the, it up to the Senate to choose your wins for you in a in a 50-50 coin flip when you oh you know that even though it, the margin is narrow in in the house but it's plenty to pass everything if the if the party unifies on stuff in the senate it's not every single democrat could vote for something and unless it's budget related it's not going through the the you know voting rights none of that stuff is all under uh, under reconciliation so anyways, we're at the end of the show. Thanks so much for tuning in, you guys. Appreciate you being here every week. Um, I live stream every day uh, at uh, twitch.tv slash HalSparks or infotainmentwars.com, which is the YouTube page, whatever your favorite. I'm also on Facebook um, at Fwank. the HalSparks page. And uh, you can go to fwank.com, F-W-A-N-Q. Follow Johnny Million on Twitter at JohnnyMillion1, and we will see you again next week. Okay. Well, have fun at Disney today, Hal. Thanks. Good show, guys. See you next week. Thank you. Absolutely. Thanks, Chicago. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks for your help. Okay. And, um, and chat room, normally, I would uh, stick around with you, uh, but um, my girl needs to uh, blow dry her hair, and then we need to race over and... Um, get in line. Uh, get in line. Yeah. That's what we have to do. Hairs. It is very fluffy today. I will say that. Um, it's very fluffy. <laughs> look at you look at you it's black um, <laughs> it's pretty fluffy um all right so yes i have to get mickey ear yes i have to get my mickey ears on it's true um so thank you guys for your uh love and support appreciate it every single day and uh, and thanks again hal vickery and all the others who gave super chats today i'm sorry if i missed a few but i'm on this kind of i'm on the perfunctory version of things so i don't get to see the list um uh take care of yourself take care of somebody else and i'll see you guys next time and we're gonna play some but we'll play some Hi. cool music on our way out the door. Let's see graphics. Wait one second. It, it, it's not as smooth as we normally do it, Johnny. So now we'll go. Anyways, bye, everybody. Yeah.